Hey, y'all, gravity, any day above ground, live it. Hope everyone's doing well. If you went outside, you're probably different because of this eclipse, but it's all right. We still love you nonetheless. <clears throat> so as you can see, this is a different show than what I wanted, but it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We still going to teach. All right. So free speech. It's in the Constitution. It's in the Bill of Rights. This is what they say the forefathers fought for. Cool. Dare I say free speech is not free. We know this. But what is the price of free speech? Are you willing to fight for it? Are you willing to go outside for it? We're going to find out because y'all have heard me say a few times that Elon Musk is going to sell this app called X Twitter, if you want, after the election. What we'll discuss today, is that going to be an acceleration of it? Hmm. But we'll find out. We'll find out. But before we do that, let's see who's in the building. Jerry Bedford, hello. Wallo J, hello. Cosmo Fury, hello. Reparations Nation, hello. Miss Nisi, hello. And Anthony Ruger Phillips, hello. Um, that roast was actually last week. That, that roast you saw was last week. The show is up there. You could watch it in full. But for those who haven't said anything in the live chat or the comment section, hello. All right, let's get into it. Now, did y'all hear that Elon Musk has to go in front of the Brazilian Supreme Court? Potentially, potentially. But he's been uh, sued. Did you know this? Put a one if you knew this, but two if you didn't know this. And then we'll get to the commencing of the teaching. Because this is very important. And also, we are also going to show y'all how the U.S. government is responding to this before this happened because there is a very important and I need y'all to hear me on this there is a very important piece of legislation that is in front of Congress when they get back but we'll discuss that later so I see a couple twos a couple ones all right let's get into it you know Let me go here. There is a, there, there's a growing concern. In so via the Wall Street Journal, this actually dropped, I think, Saturday or Sunday, but most people found out about it this morning. Elon Musk vows to defy Brazil order to block some X accounts amid hate speech clampdown. Now, for those who don't know, Brazil is one of the few countries on Earth that has a governmental ban on censor on not censor but free speech they're allowed to censor people uk can do it i believe france can do it germany definitely can do it and i think there was an asian country i i besides china but i forget them at the moment but for a quick history before quick history on the censorship. Here we are. So it says censorship in Brazil, both cultural and political, occurred throughout the whole period following the coloniza colonization of the country. Even though most state censorship ended just before the period of re democratization that started in 1985, Brazil still experiences a certain amount of non official censorship today. The current legislation restricts freedom of expression concerning racism or the PAIM law. And the Constitution prohibits the anonymity of journalists. So they can publish journalists' name. Now, you know, here in America, we can't do that. 
especially when you hear those course cases when they ask reporters to reveal your source and they'd rather go to jail than do that. So there's that. So here we are. During the Bolsonaro administration, cases of political censorship in Brazil intensified with some lawsuits being filed against journalists and news outlets by government representatives or associates of the president. In November 2021, then 84 years old Brazilian movie director Ronaldo Paez de Barros, most known for directing photography for a movie, movie adaptation of the no novel Menino de Enguerro, was convicted of racism for the screening of his short film Matem. Os otros. Following protests from indigenous people's rights activists, the film portrays a group of Brazilian Southerners traveling together while speaking racist rhetoric against the indigenous peoples of Brazil. Paez de Barros was fined and sentenced to two years in prison, converted into community service. The MPF, Public Prosecutor's Office, has objected to the decision, arguing the filmmaker's penalty should be much higher. In November 2022, a Brazilian Supreme Court decision was criticized as censorship by representatives of tech giants Twitter, listen, Instagram, Facebook, Telegram, YouTube, and TikTok after the court blocked the social media accounts of the minor far-left political party workers' cause party. Who bought Twitter in 2022? The president of the Supreme Court defended the decision alleging that the party was expressing criminal statements with mass dissemination of open and repeated attacks on democratic institutions and on the democratic rule of law itself in total disregard of the constitutional parameters that protect freedom of speech. Now, if y'all remember, I told you I lost my live stream when I was talking about their version of one six, but okay. Now we go back to Elon. Elon Musk vowed to fight an order by Brazil's Supreme Court to remove several ex accounts calling for the removal of one of the country's most powerful judges in an increasingly tense showdown over free speech in Latin America's biggest nation. Ex formerly known as Twitter initially complied with the order, which comes as part of a broader clampdown by Brazil on social media accounts that are deemed to be, excuse me, propagating hate speech and false information. But Musk, who has owned the platform since 2022, said in a series of posts over the weekend that all these accounts would be reinstated. We are lifting all restrictions, Musk wrote on Saturday night. As a result, we will probably lose all revenue in Brazil and have to shut down our office there. But principles matter more than profit. You say that now. <laughs> then on Sunday, Musk wrote that X would soon publish details of the order, which he said was given by top justice Alexandre de Moraes. The judge has this judge has brazenly and repeatedly betrayed the constitution and people of Brazil. He should resign or be impeached, Musk wrote. Brazil's Supreme Court said Monday that De Moraes had opened an investigation into Musk late Sunday over possible obstruction of justice, as well as including him in an existing inquiry into online disinformation campaigns. The court didn't comment on the original order to block the accounts. It X declined to comment on whether the said accounts had already been unblocked. Musk, who had called himself a free speech absolutionist, dismantled much of Twitter's infrastructure around content moderation in the weeks after he took over the company in October 2022. And we saw what happened. The rise of hate speech was up. But they said it went up over a thousand percent. But, you know. You know. Have to just make sure to keep the status quo. He also said X generally should intervene only to comply with local laws. We can't go beyond the laws of a country, must said last year of his content moderation approach in the BBC interview. If we have a choice of either our people go to prison or we comply with the laws, we will comply with the laws. Mm -hmm. What is this? The usage is fair. All right, let's now take a look at the developments that are coming in from the world of technology now. X, formerly known as Twitter, it's revealed that they've been forced by court decisions to block certain popular accounts in Brazil. 
According to reports, the court has prohibited the social media platform from making public any details related to the order. Meanwhile, ex-owner Elon Musk said he will lift the restrictions even if it leads to the closure of the social media platform in the country. Musk said that he will be legally challenging the court order. The social media company says it is unaware why the blocking orders have been issued, adding that it is threatened with daily fines if it fails to comply. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Meanwhile, Gillespie, or Gless, Glacy, I guess, Glacy Hoffman, the head of President Luis Inacio Lula da Silva's leftist workers' party, accused Musk of inflaming the far right in Brazil. Quote, the unwanted and abusive comments by the billionaire American Elon Musk are an attack on Brazilian sovereignty, she wrote on X on Sunday. He's actually South African, but I see why you did that. De Moraes, who was heading an investigation to former President Jair Bolsonaro over allegations he was planning a military takeover of the country before losing the 2022 presidential elections, had led many has led many efforts to clamp down on disinformation, arguing that it is necessary to safeguard Brazil's fragile de democracy. Bolsonaro has denied the existence of a coup attempt. In his other role as temporary head of the country's electoral court, De Moraes also led a trial last year that resulted in Bolsonaro's ban from political office until 2030, further sparking the ire of many conservatives. And it goes on and on. That's more than three minutes, by the way. But okay. So you got that. Then you have this. He threatens to reveal information on Brazilian judge that would paint him as a traitor to his country for his actions during X investigation. So you won't go see him straight up. You're going to basically dox him. Way to use the free speech. Way to use it. Then you have this from Reuters saying, amid probe into Musk, Brazil's top court says every company is subject to the Constitution. Mm. The funny thing is, it's not like they didn't know this. Oh, more people walked in. I didn't see this. Cosmo Fury, hello. Brother Torian, hello. AKA Sour God, hello. Bulls fan 25, hello. It's like y'all didn't know this. But okay. I wonder what the usual suspects said. I wonder. I wonder. Let's find out. You know, let me go here. There is a, <laughs> there, there's a growing concern in. We're going to start here. Benny Johnson, this this racist, but he had on Byron Donalds. Oh, we can only imagine what Byron said. Fair use. It's Trump's social media posting game, and it said so many times, Elon Musk confronting some cases now out of Brazil, which I think is quite fascinating because what you have is you have a government that is targeting an American entrepreneur targeting uh, somebody who works an enormous amount, has security, top security clearances, works an enormous amount with our military uh, to keep America safe, designs and obviously builds one of the greatest entrepreneurs in, in history, maybe the greatest entrepreneur in history. Uh, some, okay. Somebody who should be protected by our laws. And okay, that's that's a hell of a stretch, but I get it. I get it. It should be protected, obviously, by uh, our politics because he's provided so much for the country. And done so much for the country. Yet here we have what's seemingly left leftists and Democrats and the corporate media are cheering for a rogue judge in Brazil now going after Elon Musk because he's trying to uphold freedom of speech. Uh, is there any is there any measure in Congress? I've seen a number of your colleagues uh, up on X like talking about this and saying how they support Elon. Um, is there going to be any motion in Congress to to look into this? It seems like the first thing our State Department should be doing is protecting innovators like Elon Musk from this this these type of attacks internationally. You would assume that's what the State Department is supposed to be doing, but they're too busy being a special pleader for Hamas. 
and for the and for the Iranians right now. That's what that's frankly what the State Department's doing, and it's it's disgusting. First, with uh with what's going on in, in Brazil with this judge, you know, I hope Elon you know continues to stand up to this pool because look, I get it. It's Brazil. It's not the United States. We have the best legal system in the world. One of the reasons why so many people come to to America to do business, and I know that the Biden administration and their crazy tactics are trying to unwind that. But this mess that's happening in Brazil is no different than the mess that's happening in New York City. Let's just be perfectly honest about it. And so, you know, Elon's going to do whatever he's got to do. Our State Department should be there. I believe in a new administration, the State Department will be there uh, to, to, to do everything that it can uh, to make sure that in Brazil, in our hemisphere, that American entrepreneurs are allowed to, you know, speak freely. And it's not that he was trying to do something to un undermine Brazilians to Brazil's government. It wasn't that. It's that he had people on the, on, on the platform speaking freely. And if yes. people are not allowed to speak freely, then America does have to has something to say about that, especially when it's in our hemisphere. In our it's funny he just said people should be able to speak freely, and we know that it's not the case. <sighs> Second question, Byron Donalds, why are you trying to explain for this man? <sighs> it, 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 it never ceases. It never ceases to amaze me. He's sitting there explaining this man. Sir, n America doesn't even follow its own free speech laws. All right. I atmosphere, we need to be very serious about these things. The, the radical left, and I mean the ultra radical left, the communists, the fascists uh, that are that are occupying far too many countries in our hemisphere. This is a long term strategic issue for the United States. And we need to be mindful about this going forward because the Chinese are very mindful about it. It's one of the reasons why you have these these funny thing. The Chinese are conservative. Oh, my God. I said that. Woo. You fucking coons got me fucked up. Russia is conservative. Oops. Brazil on a whole is a conservative country. So is India. South Africa, where Elon is from, is a conservative country. Say it with me, Byron Donalds. Y'all so worried about another country, what they doing in terms of their speech laws. They're whooping your ass right now on the global sector. It's called BRICS. You should be talking about that, but you're worried about X because it might infringe on the few hundred dollars a month that you get for tweeting. I want you to understand this. He's only talking about this because he's going to lose a little bit of political influence and a couple hundred dollars a month for tweeting. That's all that is. He don't care about what's going on in Brazil. Neither do we, but you're sitting on a platform as a sitting congressman saying this. So you don't care, but you're ready to go act to help Elon Musk. The man you gave billions of dollars in welfare to in the form of bonds and subsidies so his he can make rockets that crash and cars that kill people okay got it got it we got it continue these 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 fascistic communist nations starting to pop up more and more in south america we got to put a stop to that using our power using our uh you know our leverage uh, on these countries because what we want is a is a democratic uh, institution in our in our hemisphere we don't want it to be top-down authoritarian we don't want it going after our entrepreneurs our business owners or frankly our people because if this judge will do this to elon musk what will he do to any other american who just happens to be on holiday in brazil that's exactly right microsoft apple whoever whatever whoever's next they'll do this to an american it just seems like such a it seems like a national security threat it seems like such an such a true threat to the country if a foreign judge can just start coming after our best innovators and an american company twitter like x is an american company and it's elon musk is an american and they're specifically targeting him for free speech. 
seems so. Well, yeah, they, I mean, they're targeting him because you know whoever on the platform is calling them out, and he's allowing it to happen. That's the entire purpose of of X, you know. And so I look at the end of the day. You got to stand up to this kind of stuff. Like I said before, these people are bullies. You cannot acquiesce to them. You cannot say, oh, okay, well, because it's how you feel, then we're going to go ahead and, and, and follow your crazy logic. You cannot do that. You have to stand for what is right. Elon Musk is standing for what is right. The American government should stand behind it 100%. Now, I know they're too busy trying to figure out how to get humanitarian aid uh, into the hands of Hamas. Um, and that's really unfortunate for where our country is right now. But America's principle when it comes to dealing with other nations is we protect Americans everywhere they are regardless of their stature, regardless of 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 of, of their business, the nature of their business, as long as it's not something that violates law. And how'd that work in Afghanistan one time? How'd that work? <coughs> how did that work for the US Embassy in Tanzania in ninety eight that bin Laden bombed? How how'd that work? Uh. Okay, you got it, sir. You got it. You got it. Don't want to hear him talk no more. And unfortunately, we're going to go down even lower. Yeah, him. He had to come outside. Dinesh the felon. All right, let's see what he said. Fair use. Notifies X that it needs to ban a bunch of people from the Brazilian opposition party. So in other words, they want X to ban people who are opposing the ruling regime in Brazil. The ruling regime is run by the um, by the head of Brazil. This is Lula da Silva, but also by two underlings who are very powerful in Brazil. The, uh, one is a Supreme Court judge named Alexandra de Moray, and the other is the attorney general of uh, Brazil. And, uh, uh, and these guys have, are the ones, the attorney general is Jorge Messias. And these are the guys who approached X and said, take all these people down. So initially, Elon Musk said, OK, I, I will. I have to because I'm following the laws of whichever country I'm part of. But then people began to say to Elon Musk on X itself, listen, don't you know, Elon Musk, you're Elon Musk. You don't have to bow down to these Brazilian overlords. Um, tell them to go take a hike. Tell them you're not going to ban these people. And so Elon Musk, in kind of move number two, decided, you know what? I'm not going to ban them. And, and, and Elon Musk recognized the full implications. He, I realize that they're going to go after me. They're going to find me. They're going to find me. They're going to try to shut down uh, X in Brazil. And Elon Musk goes, you know, we'll obviously lose money if that happens in Brazil. And Elon Musk is like, so what? So this is, um, this is a, it's worth noting here that the fate of free speech in America at this point in our history is kind of relying on one guy. Now, this is a very Oh boy, here we go. So now Elon Musk is the king of free speech. What did I now y'all see why I titled it the way I did? Now nah, he's the king of free speech. <laughs> Elon Musk, the king of free speech. The same man who put back in the restriction that you can't misgender somebody. But he's the king of free speech. Hmm. This is interesting. Very interesting. The same man, yeah, y'all seen this king of the free speech. But you got racist white supremacists getting mad at him because other people were getting their tweets boosted up while theirs was getting shadow banned, according to that punk BIPOC doing racism. But he's the king of free speech. <laughs> The same king of free speech who had black Twitter users like Don Lucre crying that they lost monetization. That's the king of free speech. Your king demonetized Elijah Schaefer and had him crashing out. But that's the king of free speech. Hmm. 
Interesting. The king of free speech in make sure Alex Jones comes back, but he couldn't strike a deal to bring his cash cow Trump back. Hmm. <laughs> Hmm. Interesting. Arius, hello. Ain't no worry, hello. Lloyd Sky and I, hello. Yeah, this, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, I keep telling y'all, kings will fall. Kings will die. Um, Your man is going to sell this after the election. I promise you he will. And then y'all going to be on that platform crying that it ain't going to be like it was. We're going to get bombarded with, with the woke mind virus. Okay. Hey, y'all let Parlor die. Y'all have Getter. You have Bitch Shoot. You have Rumble. You have Locals. All you you had true social. Here's the funny thing, family. Here we go. And this is where the hypocrisy lies. And shout out to Brother Torian with the grifter of the supporter argument. Trump sat there and put all his money and weight behind the app, and you efforts wouldn't even go over there. Isn't that something? Outside of Trump, who is the big name over there? Huh? He made that app for you, and you don't even want to frequent it. Isn't that something? Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Funny. This this is exactly. This is an eight year griff coming to an end. Unbelievable. <sighs> Let's finish this up. Odd thing to say. And it's in a way a very unfortunate thing to say because it shouldn't be. First of all, it's kind of unfair to Elon Musk for him to carry this kind of a burden. Uh, but secondly, um, free speech is not in good shape <laughs> in a country where it. <laughs> y'all anointed him that, remember? Huh? Did y'all forget that? Did y'all forget that? Y'all anointed him that. You said free speech was back. He said it. Y'all didn't say, let's pump our brakes. Let's pump our brakes. We've got more to fight. You said that. And look where we are now. Mm. But, you know, far be it for us to tell y'all that we told y'all this years ago. Conspiracy theories, that's what they called it. I'm probably going to get in trouble for this one. But we're going to play this. Fair use. They're opening a criminal investigation of Elon Musk 
for simply pointing out that that country has a totalitarian system that's taken it over and that he refuses to ban the list he's given of members of their Congress that are very, very popular that are also rising. See, he's got a problem. Oh, they banned Bolsonaro, claiming he tried to steal an election for lightly challenging it, just like they're doing with Trump. God, that music sucks. Okay, whatever. Um, for you here today, but I wanted to come on the air and commend and just support Elon Musk for what he's doing in Brazil, where they have established a dictatorship through Lula and the corrupt Supreme Court, where they are barring any political candidate that is in the lead from being able to run for office in their Congress or for president. They banned the incredible Bolsonaro, as you know, for eight years to be able to run. But now they're saying they're opening a criminal investigation of Elon Musk for simply pointing out that that country has a totalitarian system that's taken it over and that he refuses to ban the list he's given of members of their Congress that are very, very popular that are also rising. See, they got a problem. Oh, they banned Bolsonaro, claiming he tried to steal an election for lightly challenging it, just like they're doing with Trump. Then, oh, there's these other people that suddenly are in the lead. So, oh, sorry, you're, you're banned off X and nobody knows who you are, and we're going to ban you off the ballot. Sound familiar? All run by the State Department, all run by the CIA. This is really important. I'm going to break it down right now. Now I'm going to comment on Elon Musk and the situation in Brazil. Did he just go to the bathroom? He's doing the now he's doing his live stream in the bathroom. All right. They're incredibly corrupt Supreme Court. We're witnessing 1984 level gaslighting by this court, claiming that Elon Musk runs a digital militia. That's Communist talk, as they always call anybody that resists the communist takeover as a militia. And he wants to support them speaking out as a militia and gets disappeared to a poor slaver camper, killed. And saying that, oh, Elon's part of disinformation because he's refusing to ban accounts of popular political opposition in Brazil. This is classic election theft out in the open, very similar to what we saw happen in 2020 here in the United States. And the documents have all come out, weaponization hearings. We know the Justice Department, we know the intelligence agencies publicly worked against President Trump and his supporters to steal that election, to manipulate the outcome. And now, using the same totalitarian tactics, they're trying to take Trump off the ballot around the country. They're doing the same thing in Brazil. They did it with Bolsonaro, banning him for eight years for being able to ever run for president so that they can submit their communist takeover and he'll never be able to run in the future. It's that simple. And then they turn around and accuse Bolsonaro of trying to, quote, steal democracy or Trump trying to, quote, steal democracy when these are classical communist slash, again, totalitarian tactics that are being used. So Elon Musk coming out and defying the order and refusing to ban uh, the new opposition leaders that are challenging Lula and the communists is just absolutely a wonderful move because all the rest of big tech has been bowing to Brazil and to the EU and to others and allowing them to establish this, this, this total censorship of control. And, and once they're done with the Alex Joneses, the Donald Trumps of the world, they're going to move on to everybody. That's what the social credit score AI system is. They admit that. So people that criticize Elon Musk all day and say he's not perfect, he's far from perfect. Nobody's perfect. But my goodness, in the last two years, and I, and I told you this was coming, Elon Musk has really uh, moved almost to a position of complete opposition to the globalists. So he's certainly moving in the right direction, and thank God for Elon Musk. This is a big deal. So now the Supreme Court uh, has opened a criminal investigation of Elon Musk, and they are saying that, uh, again, he has a digital militia, and he's trying to steal the elections, all because the same corrupt Supreme Court that took Bolsonaro off the ballot and won't let him run for office is scared and knows the people of Brazil are turning against him. Because, again, you can steal elections, but then you've got to censor and control the press or people will point out that it's stolen and, and you, you won't be able to maintain your totalitarian control. It's very, very simple. I know the audience all understands this, but Elon Musk is taking them directly on. And they cannot stand. Their, 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 their operation will fail uh, if Musk stands firmly against them. At the same time, uh, X has doubled the amount of uh, people on it and, and the amount of use in just the last few years since Musk took it over. That is also been exposing all the other big tech companies who are losing major market share. If you've got one big free platform, the quasi free, it will expose the others. Well, they already got that with TikTok, sir. 
So you heard him on that. 55 people in the room. Hit the like. Okay. He might be in a, in a submersible Vincent Taylor in Hello. Wrestling reads Hello. There's that. So you've got all the principles. You've got all the principles. Elon Musk is a grifter, folks. We already know this. We know this. But it's kind of like what we were talking about with K Caitlin Clark. PC, Dub S, the Clear Dashians, whatever you want to call them, they always seem to find these avatars and prop them up, and they're going to let them down. Alex Jones was propped up almost 30 years ago as this voice of the conspiracy. And just because he got one or two correct, everybody thought he was great. And then when Sandy Hook came around, then people were like, you know what? He might really be crazy. He went from an avatar down to broken clock. And as such... You can't take his words so serious. <laughs> Y'all are really sitting up here trying to tell us and convince us that Elon Musk really cares about us. He cares about free speech, but you saw him doing an interview with Don Lemon and took away his free speech. Uh-huh. Sure. So we have that. <clears throat> the man is a griff hound. I get it. There's a lot of money to be made in grifting. We get it. But it's not with him. It's not it. The only people that can save free speech is us. The citizens that don't have the money, the citizens that relate to each other, those are who's going to save it. Them elites don't care about you, sir. They don't care about me. They care about their bank accounts. Oh boy, we might have some breaking news, family. But let me get to this important bill, April 10th, an important vote that is fixing to happen. We all that day need to watch this. Who knows what FISA means? F-I-S-A. Who knows what that means? We'll fix it and put it in the chat. Just want to see if y'all really been paying attention to what's going on out here. Okay, full fan said he knows what it is. We got to watch this vote. Sean Tape said government can snoop on your phone for info. Well, the NSA has been doing that for decades. The Patriot Act was their first step to making that normal. 
Ah, Reparations Nation. Very good. Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. Oh, sorry, Bulls fan. My bad. I, th I always thought you were a guy, but I apologize. You're only as old as you feel. But, yeah, very important vote on Wednesday. You know, let me go here. There is a, <laughs> there, there's a growing concern. In so we have this. The GOP reps vow to fight FBI spying on Americans as FISA reauthorization looms. Now, they reauthorized it. So... Thomas Massey was, I think it was like two others back earlier in 2022, said that the FBI was using FISA warrants to spy on people. Now, mostly it was like, you know, elected officials, but also nationals, nationals, not migrants, nationals. And he said, that's not cool. But what I've been alluding to is come Wednesday, They want the for the bad actors, we'll say it like this, the bad actors in Congress and in the government want to expand FISA, combine it with the NSA, and basically have brother I for those injustice people who know what I'm talking about. They want to create brother I, basically. They want to be able to spy on everybody. Tabernacle. April 7th, Thomas Massey wrote this yesterday. The U.S. government uses the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act to spy on Americans without a warrant. This week, the House will vote to require the feds to get a warrant to snoop on Americans. Sadly, this vote is likely to fail. I will demand a recorded vote and post results. So they're back in session today after their break. But this is what they're going to vote on. Not to fix the infrastructure, not to make sure to get money in Americans' pockets. They won't. They couldn't even agree on doing a child tax credit. But this here, they want to make sure they could spy on you. In an election year. Hmm. Uh, the FISA came out, I want to say 20, I want to say FISA started in 2010, I think. Oh, it was 1978. I was way off. Okay. So 1978. Signed by Jimmy Carter. Funny thing, because I was looking up some information. Look at these names who uh, co-sponsored the bill. Birch Bear. James O. Eastland. One of Biden's mentors. Jake Garn. Walter Huddleston. Daniel Inoue, Charles Mathias, John L. McLennan, Gaylord Nelson, and old Strom Thurmond, another one of Biden's friends and mentors. Mm. Mm. Yeah. We want to go to this here. Let's see what he says. It says, know who to blame for what's happening in X in Brazil right now? The U.S. State Department. Fair use. A U.S. multinational tech company. So I don't see this Brazil censorship situation as being a Brazil situation. I see this being the U.S. State Department. I see this being the U.S. foreign policy establishment. I see this being the U.S. blob operating through Brazil as a proxy and supporting behind the scenes what Brazil is doing with the censorship actions that are now forcing X out of the country. So let me break down what I mean here. So the blob fears populism. 
Okay, the U.S. foreign policy establishment fears the rise of domestic populist groups in the U.S. and around the world, in NATO countries and in BRICS countries, like Brazil, BRICS. So <clears throat> here's what's happening here. A, a couple of years ago, I wrote a report, which I was very shocked to dis discover at the time. Not, I should say, I was shocked to the extent of it. But, uh, but basically, it, it turned out that when I was looking into what was behind censorship in Brazil, it turned out there was a, that what was driving it appeared to be a gaggle of U.S. State Department-funded NGOs. And not just State Department-funded NGOs, but they were actually National Endowment for Democracy funded as well. You had USAID and the National Endowment for Democracy funding a bunch of domestic censorship groups in Brazil. This, is, this actually goes right back to the beginning of Bolsonaro's tenure in 2019. In June 2019, the Atlantic Council convened a meeting about what to do about the rise of disinformation in Brazil that was that was pro-Bolsonaro in nature. And the Atlantic Council's panel called Election Watch in June 2019 bemoaned the fact that in Brazil, people were paying more attention to their own friends, family, and clergy than they were to institutions, global institutions, such as the Atlantic Council, which is a CIA pass-through. It has seven CIA directors on its board. It's annually funded every year by the Pentagon, the State Department, and the National Endowment for Democracy, which is a CIA cutout. Now, in addition to that, a bunch of these university centers in Brazil and civil society groups get National Endowment for Democracy funding. That is a CIA pass-through. So this is the CIA and State Department and USAID directly funding. For in June 2019, the the uh, the censorship apparatus in Brazil against pro Bolsonaro groups. See, in 2019, social media was already censored in Brazil. Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube censorship in Brazil hit them really hard, the same way that it did in the U.S. So Bolsonaro supporters switched to WhatsApp and Telegram in, to spread their messaging because they were basically kicked off of off of Facebook. This is why one of the biggest audiences for Gab, one of the first free speech uh, sort of alternative platform attempts, was the Brazilian population in 20, in 2018, 2019 because they were hit with that first wave of censorship part. So what the Atlanta Council and a bunch of these other National Endowment for Democracy funded CIA proxies did is they then descended on, on WhatsApp and Telegram. And they promoted these little organs, these little activists, these little proxies within Brazil to put pressure on the Brazilian government to take out WhatsApp and Telegram until WhatsApp and Telegram also censored populist supporters, pop, right-wing populist nationalist Bolsonaro supporters. And so that led to WhatsApp putting caps on the amount of messages that could be forwarded and it led to them basically shutting down the ability to, to approximate the size of a Facebook group. They, they vastly reduced the amount of people who could populate a single group in order to basically balkanize pro Bolsonaro speech. And then when Telegram refused to censor misinformation, they actually shut down Telegram in the country until it agreed, until it bent the knee to the government. So when it came out by The Intercept a couple of years later, The Intercept reported this last year. They were surprised. They said, it turns out that the State Department and the CIA directly intervened in Brazil's election, uh, the Lula election, in order to stop Bolsonaro supporters from being able to challenge the election results or, or challenge the issues around mail-in ballots. This is the CIA, the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency, and the State Department deploying your taxpayer dollars in order to censor Brazilians talking about their own election because they wanted Bolsonaro to lose. Now, you know, it, it gets a lot a lot darker here, too, because remember, if they're if they were censoring, um, you know, pro-Biden speech, in, in uh, well, actually, one, one more thing. So again, Bolsonaro was like Trump of the tropics. That's the way that he was touted. The blob, the foreign policy establishment, feared a new non-aligned movement, which was the scourge of, of our of our blob during the Cold War in the form of all these populist countries. Bolsonaro was part of this wing along with Orban and a bunch of right-wing populist groups in Europe, uh, and he was insufficiently anti-Russia on a number of things. And get to that, uh, you know, another time. But essentially, here's what here's if here's what would normally happen if a foreign country like Brazil did what it just did, and you can think of it is if. Brazil had been had was choosing to censor pro Biden neoliberal groups in Brazil. This is what would happen as well. And so the first thing that would happen is is the State Department would come rushing in, because the State Department is sort of the head of that trifecta there with the State Department, DOD, and CIA. So that's our foreign policy establishment. So the first thing is 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 the State Department would send a delegation and say, "Hey, Brazil, you are reliant on us for trade in the, in these three respects." We have, you know, you're reliant on us for funding of your civil society in these respects. You're reliant on us for security guarantees in certain respects. You're, you're, you depend on us for some of this, you know, supply chain infrastructure. Hey, if you want to keep that, then you're going to rescind this law that you just passed or this ruling that just came down from your Supreme Court that's hurting a U.S. national champion operating in your area. This is what the US State Department national would do for Microsoft, champion. for Apple, and for Facebook, by the way, because this is this gets to another issue here around favors and the favor bank. OK, one of the reasons that tech companies do favors to the federal government, everyone's like, why did Facebook give in? Because Zuckerberg did not want to do the censorship that Facebook ultimately ended up doing. He's not a diehard you know, ideologue on the censorship issue. In fact, he complained in 2019 about censorship going too far and then he bent the knee. 
And, you know, because Facebook is, is an example where Facebook doesn't rely on the government for a lot of government contracts in the same way that Amazon and Apple and Microsoft do. But they are reliant on the government to protect them. They are reliant on the State Department to negotiate on their behalf, on the State Department to pressure foreign countries to make sure that alternative Facebooks don't rise or that the data laws in that country don't negatively impact Facebook or that the advertising laws, you name it. And so, you know, in this case, <laughs> we just passed sanctions on Iran last summer for, for Iran engaging in government censorship of civilian groups. That is, we banned multiple private companies in Iran. We put sanctions on the Iranian government, kicking them off of the U.S. dollar, these, these, these folks, for, for engaging in censorship in Iran. Now, of course, this was because the CIA was backing these proxy groups during this green revolution to try to overthrow the government. And so when Iran pushed back on, on the CIA-backed groups, then, you know, then suddenly sanctions. The U.S. State Department here is not going to threaten sanctions on Iran for this. I'm sorry, sa sanctions on Brazil on this. The U.S. State Department is not going to send a delegation to Brazil and say, hey, you know, if you want to benefit from America as a trade partner, if you want us to continue doing favors for you, you're going to shut down this new this new situation with with uh, with, with hurting U.S. national champions in the form of Twitter slash X in Brazil. But that's not going to happen here. And that's not going to happen here because the State Department is behind it. OK, I would not be surprised if the State Department has had these back. I know this came from a Supreme Court ruling in Brazil. But I can almost guarantee you, if the House Foreign Affairs Committee launches an investigation on this and goes to the Western Hemisphere, that's 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 the regional desk that's going to cover Brazil, and looks at their communications with with the Brazilian government, you're going to find that disinformation is going is it's going to be chock full there, and it's all going to be targeted at the right wing populist groups that they call a pipeline from Bolsonaro to Trumpism. And you can actually go to the FFO article that I wrote on this two years ago, and you can watch the playthrough videos which I embedded in the report, which showed. U.S. aid and NED, that's CIA, backed, backed professors in Brazil talking about how by shutting down these pro-Bolsonaro groups, it will shut down support for Trumpism. Well, ain't that great for the Biden administration? They're spending your tax dollars to promote censorship in a foreign country to take out a U.S. national champion. Hey. Refer back to my Candace Owens live stream when we reviewed that interview she did in Netherlands. He said it in there, the interviewer. He said that there's a rise of conservatism in Europe. They're really trying to get this conservative wave across the world and Jesus Christ. They take no lessons from what's going on with the left. It don't work. You have to have a balance of ideologies. You have to have a balance of political thought processes. When you have too much of one, you're going to have anarchy. But y'all want this conservative wave because you think that helps. Yet you've seen empires that have been conservative fall. But I get it. You have America on the top and you have spindly columns, which are all these other countries trying to hold it up. It ain't going to work. But, you know, far be it from us to keep telling you, you know, us woke people that stuff like this never works and you're just trying to delay the inevitable. But, you know, who are we? But anyway, like I said, this vote is on Wednesday, so we should take a look at this and don't worry, I will keep y'all abreast of it. If it's before I have to go to work, best believe there will be a live stream on this. Wrestling reset. What happened? I'm at work. I'm just talking about how Elon Musk is grifting free speech and these idiots keep falling for these grifters. And what this guy was just talking about is Elon Musk is fighting a court case in Brazil where he has to either conform and agree with their censorship policies or they're going to take revenue away from him in Brazil and he's going to end up having to do what he did and liquidate assets and get out of the country. But he claimed he don't care about the money. He care about free speech. Yet we've watched this app. He won't let people even defend themselves. And he let the races run him up because he's giving them money. Which we all, as I've said, 
multiple times, the logical conclusion is after this election, he's going to sell that app. He's not going to want to deal with it anymore. But who knows? It might pass. It might pass. But we've seen the FBI work around warrants before, so it is what it is. But I figure I'd just bring you all this information. Norman X, hello. It's been a while. He said, meanwhile, I hated Don Lemon's free speech during the interview. Of course he did, because he didn't like to be challenged. But before we get out of here, I had said breaking news earlier. Mm. Do you know there was almost another bridge incident? <laughs> did y'all know this? Oh, boy. I guess we might as well just blame the eclipse for this. You know, let me go here. There's a, <laughs> there's a growing concern. In You're reading that correctly. Huge cargo ship loses power near New York Bridge, incident reminiscent of what led to Baltimore collapse. Fair use. This morning, another massive container ship losing power less than two weeks after the deadly bridge collapse in Baltimore. Pictures posted online show the 89,000 ton, 1100 foot long vessel APL King Dow anchored close to New York's Verrazano Narrows Bridge. The U.S. Coast Guard confirms the container ship had experienced a loss of propulsion Friday night as it traversed a waterway in New York Harbor. Three tugboats were escorting the ship, which is standard procedure for large vessels heading out into the Atlantic. The tugboats were able to tow the ship until it regained propulsion. Authorities note even if the ship had come close to the bridge, the design of the bridge with protective rock islands built around its posts would have likely prevented the kind of March 26 catastrophe in Baltimore when a container ship lost power, hitting the pillars of the Francis Scott Key Bridge, causing it to collapse and kill six construction workers who fell with the span. Salvage crews have started removing the hundreds of shipping containers on board the Dolly, and on Friday, divers located the body of one of the four remaining construction workers. The incident in Baltimore and the one in New York serving as reminders for bridge officials nationwide to be on alert. It is the time to go out and rethink what you have and make sure that all the inspections and all the uh, studies have been made for the individual bridges themselves. As for the ship that lost power in New York, after being repaired, it was allowed to continue on its journey, headed now to Norfolk, Virginia. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. <laughs> okay. Asian ship. Okay. Mm. Hmm. So there's that. Anyway, hopefully y'all got something out of this. If you did, i done my job. If not, I'll try to be better next time. Who knows? I might be back later. I saw some things that we might have to talk about, but I ain't sure. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow or Wednesday. I'm not sure. But I will see you when I see you. We got some stuff coming down the pipe, though. We got some stuff coming down the pipe because it is New Black Media Appreciation Month. So who knows who or what might pop in and want to say something. Anyway, y'all, I'm going to go make dinner. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day. Rewatch the uh, clips if you want, because down here in Atlanta, it's over. So it's back to normal, I guess. And yeah, enjoy life. 
take care, stay safe, and you know what to do when the agents of chaos come to mess up your existence. At the end of the day, the day got to end. Oh, 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 oh.